This is the Frozen Transform, the massive size resin 3D printer. This machine comes with a huge print volume and insane print quality, so if you're looking for the resin 3D printer who can print huge models or many small models all at once, then this 3D printer might be your choice. Stay tuned. Hi guys, Nexi here and thanks for tuning in. The resin 3D printers are starting to get more popular and more affordable in the last two years, but most majority of the resin 3D printers have something in common. And there is quite a small build volume as most of them use a single 2K 5.5 inch LCD screen. Fortunately this is not the case with the Frozen Transform, who use a much larger 4K 13.3 inch LCD screen, which is significantly larger than the standard LCD screen on the most other resin 3D printers. With a bigger screen the size of the build plate is also increased, and now on this printer the build plate is 290mm long and 160mm wide, and combined with a 400mm z-axis, the total build volume or the maximum print size of this machine is 290 by 160 by 400 mm which is amazingly large build volume for the resin 3D printer. Having the build plate this huge, not only it allows you to print huge models in outstanding print quality, it also allows you to print dozens of small models all at once, which significantly speeds up the print time and lower the print cost. Now you can get way more prints from the LCD screen before it needs replacement. Speaking of replacement parts, on a manufacturer website, you will find all the spare parts you ever need for your printer with a reasonable price, including different type of resins like ABS-like, flexible, cast resin and others as well. On the Frozen website, there is also PDF manuals, slices software and technical documents available. It's also good to point that you can convert this printer from a single 4K 13.3 inch LCD screen into dual 2K 5.5 inch screen, which is very interesting. In terms of package, the printer comes very well packed, and the shipping box comes with a lot of protective foam from the each side of the printer. And also the whole printer is wrapped in a plastic protective foil to keep the dust away. With the printer, it also comes a smaller box, in which there was the two bottles of the ABS-like resin, bill plate, quick guide, power cable, funnel, air filter case, Wi-Fi dongle, gloves, one plastic and one metal spatula, Allen key, LAN cable, and two door handles, which is the only thing that needs assembly on this printer. Now, let's talk about the hardware and the build quality. The Frozen Transform is the printer that is made like a tank. It has a solid and metal frame, covered with a steel plate sheet, coated in a grey color. This printer is very heavy, it rests on a six hard rubber feet, and it really feels a bulletproof and well made. On the front side we have the huge front doors which use magnets and they open nice and wide so you have a nice and easy access to the printed model. The build plate and the z-axis are rock solid and super stable. The z-axis is supported by twin liner rails mounted on a thick and rigid platform that moves on a ball screw which are never seen before on a desktop 3D printer. These heavy-duty components are usually used in industrial CSC machines and not quite on a desktop 3D printers. On the front side of the printer there is a touch 5.5 inch LCD screen. The screen itself is a bright, responsive and the software interface is simple and very user-friendly. On the main screen there are six icons from where you can choose the files to print, test your LCD, level the printer, add print profiles for the different type of resins, set the Wi-Fi and if we click here on the settings there is a status icon where you can see the status of your printer like CPU usage, temperature and the memory status, which is nice. On the left side of the printer there is a handle and exhaust fan. On the right side of the printer there is a handle and the two intake fans. And on the back of the printer there is a socket for LAN, two USB ports and 16GB microSD card, which holds the printer software and store the print files. Next on the back there is a place for AC plug with a fuse and the main power on off switch. More on the back we have one more exhaust fan, which pulls air from the printer enclosure. Now if you remove these two screws and take off this huge watt, which by the way hold up to 1 liter of resin, we can see the 4K 13.3 inch LCD screen and if we remove these four screws as well and leave the screen housing, 
we can see the UV LED light source under the screen, which cures the prints. Now, unlike the other UV resin 3D printers, who use a single UV LED light source and a single lens or reflector to cure the resin, the Frozen Transform use parallel optical engine, which means that the UV source combines many smaller LED diodes, which expose the layer to the UV light up to 95% of the surface area, which is very important with an LCD of this size, as all the layers of the screen surface will get nice and even exposure to the UV light. In terms of slices software, you can use the free frozen slicer called the PZ Slice, available on the Frozen website. But since the Frozen company also gives you the profile for the slicer called Chi2 Box, I use that one for the most of the time. Chi2 Box is a free as well, but far more popular and it will do pretty much all you need. Besides basic functions like resize, orientation and scale, the slicer has some more advanced features like adding the custom or automatic supports, you can hollow your model with it, and as well you can add the custom drain holes on the model exactly where you need them, which is very useful. Now after when you slice the model that you want to print, there is a two options how you can print. First you can save the zip file on the USB stick and then plug it in the printer, or you can set the zip file using the web interface over the Wi-Fi. Connecting the printer on the Wi-Fi is very easy. First you plug the Wi-Fi dongle into USB port, then choose your network and then type your password. After successful connection you will see the printer IP address on the screen, which you can type in your browser to access the printer. The printer uses Orange Pi with a Wi-Fi and from the web interface you can send the sliced zip files directly to the printer. On the every print file there is a nice black and white image preview of every print and during the printing there is a printing status with the printer temperature, CP usage and the memory status. And during printing the print status over the Wi-Fi matches with the status of the printer screen which is nice. Now before you pour the resin into the watt, I recommend first to test the LCD screen using the screen controls on the printer just to make sure that everything is working correctly. Also the leveling of the build plate is easy and the procedure is like on any other resin 3D printer. First you install the build platform and tighten these two thumb screws. Then use the allen key to loose the four platform screws and remove the watt. Next place the four small pieces of the A4 paper on each corner of the LCD screen. Now home the Z-axis and gently press the build platform by hand and tighten up the screws. And that's pretty much it. Now before we start to talk about the print quality, I need to mention a few words regards of safety and the resin 3D printers in general. Since most of the UV resins are considered toxic, I strongly recommend that you always wear the gloves and eye protection goggles when you work with any type of UV resin. Also you should always keep the resin and the printer away from the small children. And because of the most of resin have pretty strong fumes, I would recommend that you use the printer in a well ventilated room because breathing these fumes are not good for your health. Since I will be using this printer in a home environment, I have installed some cheap and simple but very effective ventilation for this printer. Now the air that comes out of the exhaust fans are being pushed out of the room and sent outside through these flexible hoses. This ventilation setup cost me around 20 bucks and I highly recommend that you do something similar like this. To install this ventilation you just need the two flexible ventilation hoses, a little bit of double side tape, some regular paper tape and about 15 minutes of your time. And now let's talk about the print quality. My first test print was this scaled down medieval castle just to test out the leveling of the build plate. The first test print turns out successful and it was printed without any problems. After that I carefully removed the print from the build plate, I used the water spray bottle, fill it with 99% isopropanol alcohol to clean the print from the leftover resin. Of course the best cleaning method would be to submerge the whole print into the alcohol and use the ultrasonic cleaner. But for the home use I found that this method with the spray work quite nice as long you are on open air or in a well ventilated room. Well, I gotta say that the print quality on this first test print is excellent. It's a bit hard to see all details because of the small scale, but under the high zoom I can see every single detail of this model, even at this scale, which is very cool. Nice. Now for my next print, I wanted to print multiple models all at once, so I cloned this set of dragons miniatures and I started to print 20 of them all at once. 
I could even fit much more than 20 of these miniatures, consider the size of the build plate, but I figure out that 20 is enough for the first time. During the printing, it was very cool to watch print progress, as the printing was looking like some cloning scene from the alien sci-fi movies. After a few hours the printer was done, and all 20 miniatures was printed successfully. Just like before, I used a spray bottle to clean the prints from the left of the resin, and all miniatures was printed beautifully. Removing the prints was easy thanks to the holes on the print platform, on which you can stick the spatula and lift the prints from underneath. Slowly one by one I removed them all, and I placed all miniatures on the spinning platform, and I cured them with a UV lamp for about 20 minutes. And here are them all now in a close-up. The print quality of the each miniature is excellent. And if you look these models under the zoom, you can see that all details are present, and I really like the design of these models. They look very nice. Now since I want to save some resin for my next prints, I decided to hollow these models using the G2 box, and I print 4 pieces of the medieval castle, together with the 4 pieces of the mimic models. At first, I thought that all prints was printed successfully, but they were not. And if you look carefully here, you can see that all castle prints failed around these two places. It seems that I hollowed this model a bit too much, and I forget to add any supports inside of the roof towers. Well, that was my fault, and now I know. By the way, all Mimic models turn out fantastic, and I print them all hollow, and I add some supports around upper teeth, and a few more supports inside of the model. These Mimic models look very interesting and weird in the same time, but I like them a lot. Now, back to the castle print. After adding the critical supports inside of some towers, I print the medieval castle again, but this time I scale them down in a tree size. 75mm, 50mm, and this tiny one, which is only 25mm tall, just to test the limit of this machine. The print quality on the first two prints was excellent, and at 50mm version you can still see all the details under the zoom. But I think that I hit the limit on this 25mm one, as the sum tower's roof was missing. Nonetheless, considering the tiny scale of this model, and the massive size of the printer, I think this is a still very impressive print. Next, I wanted to print something bigger, and I found the tower of the pie, which looks very interesting. After cleaning and curing, the prints turned out to be very nice, and all of the details was visible. From the first to the last set of numbers, the print results was fantastic. Very nice indeed. Now from the next print, I found a very nice looking model of the hawk, and just for the fun, I printed together with a medieval castle and with one more mimic model. After cleaning, removing supports and curing under the UV lamp, I got very nice print results. The hawk looks very nice, plenty of detail, with a nice texture, and it have a very nice and smooth surface. Since you cannot see any layers on this print, it really feels like it's a cast molded rather than 3D printed. Alright, and now it's time to print something bigger and much more complicated. So I found this model of the wolf and the red riding little hood, which in my opinion is the one of the best looking 3D model that you can print. So I scale the model, I hollow it, I add drain holes, supports, and I start to print. For every few hours I was checking the model just to make sure that I don't get low on the resin. After 21 hours the print was finished and because of the model complexity there is a tons of support all over the model, but even so you can still see how awesome the print quality will be when we remove supports. Luckily with this type of resin, which is similar like ABS, the supports are very easy to remove and they are nice and flexible. So you can just break them with your fingers and remove them piece by piece. The smaller supports that I could not break with the fingers, I remove later on with the cutters or tweezers. Also, I like to remove supports before curing, because it's much easier. After curing the supports becomes rock solid and they are hard to remove. After cleaning the model and curing for 30 minutes under UV lamp, this is how the model looks in a close up. I print the base as well and all I can say is wow. The print quality and design of this model is outstanding. The muscle and veins and just the level of details on this model is a very impressive. And the more you look the more you notice. It feels so smooth and it looks so real very impressive. Also keep in mind that this is before any sanding or painting, which will cover all of these small marks where the support was. Now since we have the beast, which looks pretty scary, 
I decided to print something even more scarier, and this is it. This is the 400mm long Alien, printed at max size of the Z-axis. This thing have a tons of details on it, and it looks amazing and terrifying in the same time. To print this model in such a large scale, the printer took 44 hours to complete, and this is the longest resin print that I ever did. After they remove all supports and wash the model from the left of resin, I closely checked the print and the only imperfection that I found was this spot on the head, which will need some sanding because some chunk on the old black resin that I add in the mix stuck on the model during the printing. Also because of the complicity of this model, the marks of the supports are all over the print, so I will need to do some sanding and post-processing before painting. But still, this print looks amazing and it can definitely creep you out if you stare on it long enough. Alright, since we have the beast and the alien, we will need some balance in the universe. So my last print is this beautiful model of the angel, called the seraph, which turns out beautifully. This model of the angel took 3 hours to print and it looks fantastic. Design of this model is so beautiful and the print surface is very smooth. I cannot wait to sand these parts where the support was and I will probably paint this model in a white color. This is such a beautiful print and I love it. And now the final words. After spending some quality time with the Frozen Transform, I gotta say that I'm very impressed with the performance, print quality and reliability of this machine. With the heavy duty steel constructions, it really feels bulletproof. This machine is easy to use, the screen is easy to replace, and there are tons of spare and consumer parts available, which is very important for the long run. With that huge 4K 13.3 inch LCD screen, the print quality is very impressive and with the ability to print huge models as well as dozens of small models all at once, this printer is very useful for production purpose as well. In terms of cons, there are two. The first one is the noise level. And this printer is loud. It has four cooling fans inside the case which keeps the internal components nice and cool, but the fans are moving a lot of air and they are loud, and that's just something to keep in mind. The good thing is that the cooling fans only comes on when the printer start printing, so you can have a printer turn on between the prints and it will not bother you. The second cons is the way you shut down the printer. As this printer using Orange Pi, you should always turn off the printer using the screen menu, and if you accidentally unplug the printer in the middle of the printing, or you switch it off using the main power switch in the middle of the print, you could corrupt the firmware and to fix it you will need to download the new firmware from the Frozen website and refresh the printer using the microSD card. The process is not the hard but that's just something to keep in mind. And the last thing I have to mention is the price. Currently on sale just under 2000 US dollars, the Frozen Transform is not cheap 3D printer and it's not for everyone. In my opinion this machine is aimed more for the people that needs to print big in a very high print quality or for the people who are doing some production and their need to bring a bunch of small models fast and efficient all in one go with a very high successful rate. And if you are such a person, then Frozen Transform is definitely a printer for you. Alright guys, I hope that you liked this video and found it useful. Link of this printer and the resin that I use you can find in a video description. And if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I see you next time. Bye-bye.